that I was just trying to write a book for which I had an idea. And into which I had invested a lot of time, years, more than I should have. So at that time, my concern was not impact, it was finish this book. That's what it was. What was your motivation? You had heard stories from your, your elders. From my grandmother and her sisters. And it was my motivation at first was curiosity. What, how old were you when it sort of struck you that you ought to document this and do some research? Probably close to 40. Hmm. And I had heard the stories, the initial stories, when I was six, seven, eight years old. But uh, I heard them at the same time that uh, I heard biblical parables. When I grew up, I guess when I was about 11 years old, my head in story terms would have been a jumble of David and Goliath and Chicken George and Miss Kizzy and Moses. It was all mixed up in there. But it was, uh, as I say, probably 40 years later. I'd been 20 years in the U.S. Coast Guard. I had begun trying to write and finally had been successful in writing th some things. And then I'd gotten to a point where uh, after I wrote my first book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X, I began to hear, it was then in the 60s and there was, you know, civil rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, I began to hear, you know, the Africa, uh, black people, this, that, the other. And it sort of took me back to thinking about the first time I ever heard about Africa, mm -hmm. was that African in the stories my grandmother and her sisters told in the family an African who lived in Spotsylvania County, kind of Virginia, and was the buggy driver for um, his masa, as they called it, who was a medical doctor named Dr. William Waller in Spotsylvania County, kind of Virginia. And that sort of, it aroused a curiosity. And one day I went to the uh, archives of the United States in, Wa in Washington, and I found on microfilm the same family my grandmother and her sisters had talked about. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I hadn't believed my grandma, because you did not believe my grandma, but there was something about the further dimension of finding documentation of what she had said in the U.S. archives on microfilm that gave me, you know, it sort of revved me up, curiosity. You, and so with that, you were able to document back to Africa. Not just that, no. I mean, there was another nine years of research <clears throat> before but I'm I went saying, back to Africa. I'm saying that was the start there. Yeah, that was the start. And you actually were able to go back to the, the very village or community? To the very village, the village of Jufere, Gambia, West Africa. Yeah. Is that the problem, though? I mean, is that part of the reason why a lot of blacks, as you mentioned, don't even know very a lot about their own history because there's sort of this, this cut no, off? No, I wouldn't say that. It, it, the, the problems uh, come before you even get to Africa. Problems very often come. Let me ask you, how much do you know about your family? You black, do you know much about your family? I'll, I'll admit I know very little. I hear stories from my grandmother. Mm -hmm. have, uh, is your grandmother living? She is. Well, now let me tell you something. You don't have anything in this world more important to do than after you finish this show, you get your way to your grandma and talk to her. Mm -hmm. You see, in your grandmother's head, in her memory, are things that if you let her pass and you haven't gotten it, it'll be absolutely impossible for you ever to get it about your family. Mm -hmm. And it's, if, if, if it is not important to you, it's most important to your children. And the only source you've got in this world is your grandmother's memory. Mm -hmm. So it's most important. So you have answered your own question. Yeah. Is that too many have not done that with the grandmother?